Good Friday morning, everybody. I uh, just was listening to the radio for a tad bit. <laughs> In the morning, I don't... Right now, we don't have any good conservative uh, radio in the morning in Southern California. I don't know what happened to it. It just all went to it went to pot. You know, it's all like moderate. <laughs> um, so the uh, okay, that's besides the point. Uh, there was an advertisement for California wildfires. Um, and they're marking the uh, start of the wildfire season. And uh, they've created an app, a mobile phone app for your phone that you can download to inform you of how to prepare for the wildfire season. Uh, and I guess, you know, loads of other info as well, like susceptible areas or something like that. Um, a while back, I think it was around 2009, I did a video on uh, the fires that occurred in the uh, Los Angeles, uh, Los Angeles forest. And I believe at that time it was called the station fires I'll have to look that up but I did some study on it and uh, came into some really interesting uh, factoids uh, regarding the reasons for the fires and why those fires occur and uh, and it's interesting um, because you know of course after the fires you know, if there's any rains, then of course the mud slides come. And then it's, you know... So this is like a wonderful time for the uh, for the news outlets, for the mainstream media, because they just love to cover the fires and they love to cover the mud slides and talk about all of it. But let's talk about common sense here, folks. Um, one of the things they were they were talking about on this little public service announcement this morning that I heard was if you if you want to um, prepare for the wildfires, you need to create a stopgap uh, between your property and the fire. In other words, if there's any dead trees around your property, you know, cut them down. Uh, dry grass, such. You know, cut that down, get that, get that all out of there, and create a stopgap between your property and where a fire could cross over. Common sense, right? Well, when it comes to managing our forests in Southern California, we don't really use the same common sense that applies to protecting our homes. Uh, in fact, uh, the money is just not there. It, when you get down to it, the priorities are not there. Uh, there are conflicting priorities. Um, I think I remember watching a documentary uh, a while back. I'll have to look it up. But it's regarding forest fires and, and how uh, the propaganda surrounding forest fires over the years, you know, over the last 50 years has been fires are bad let's put the fires out and over the years they even had these like special uh, forestry you know brigades or whatever that would um, actually you know helicopter into these places and put put fires out in the middle of forests and uh, control forest fires and of course you know the whole Smokey the Bear campaign I don't know if any of you remember Smokey the Bear you know, only you can prevent forest fires. And of course, a lot of that had to do with properly, you know, putting out your campfire and, and uh, well, that was like, like the main thing, you know. Don't leave your campfire, you know, 
still, you know, warm or whatever, you know, put, make sure to put your campfires out. And, uh, you know, the reality is, is what they found over the years is that forest fires are nature's way of cleaning out uh, the dead brush, the dead trees over time so that you don't have these massive fires. Okay, so the problem is that our government continues to uh, really uh, uh, hurt itself because, well, the main thing is we're not doing enough backburning. Okay, now we have all of, we know where all the backburning needs to occur. You know, if you look up the websites, you look up the, the government websites, you can, uh, you can read about all the areas and you can, you can learn about all those areas that need to have backburning. And they've all been pre-approved. We're all, where we are a go, we can, we can backburn those areas in Southern California. Except there is a hindrance by the air quality management district on which days you can burn. And if it's windy and which way the wind's blowing and such and such and this and that, okay? So what happens is when they say, okay, green light, go ahead, go out, do, do all your back burning. There's never enough days in the year to get all the back burning done because there's too many restrictions. <clears throat> so two things neither need to happen. There either needs to be less restrictions on the uh, back burning days that, that we need to uh, create a safer environment for those communities that surround the Los Angeles forest and other areas or we need more uh, either forestry people or firefighters and that means more money to get out there on the days that they're allowed to burn to burn everything we need to burn to keep our community safe okay so maybe now you're starting to see a little bit of politics in action here and how it's all uh, kind of biting itself in the foot. Long story short, I turn on the radio this morning, I hear a public service announcement. Oh, we're all in fire season. This is fire season in Southern California. Prepare yourself, prepare your home, create a stopgap between your home and any areas that would, you know, a fire could cross over. What? government is there to protect us they want us to put out the money they want us to get out there and do the the stop gap you know creating a stop gap cutting down dead trees if the trees are dead they should be cut down or they should be burned down uh, grass that uh, shouldn't be there should be back burned come on come on getting a little bit tiffed. Anyway, I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm going to say God bless everyone and uh, happy Friday. Uh, I'm going to move on to the next thing because, you know, all right, guys, keep seeking truth. Bye.